What is up everybody? Welcome back to a new video. And today I'm very excited to take you behind the scenes of another mix uh, that I did recently for a friend of mine. Uh, they were very kind to um, invite me to kind of work on an arrangement and a mix for a song for their local church, uh, for a church service. And so um, th this is uh, a little bit different for me because usually I mix a, a vocalist along with like the piano and then put the orchestra around it. But um, but in this case, we had uh, a vocal and a guitar. Um, and this is quite common in the pop world and the indie world where you have, you know, singer songwriters with just the vocal and guitar, um, sending it out to a producer or a mixer. But for me, I, I don't work as much with guitar, even though I, I hear it quite, you know, quite a lot. Uh, but I wanted to show you kind of the behind the process behind my personal arrangement uh, thinking. And then I'll take you into kind of the mix of how I did this. So uh, really quickly, let me just play a little bit of his um, vocal and guitars. And you know what? I'm going to actually take out the processing for now. So let's actually take these out um, and take out the guitar processing as well. So as you can see on the guitars, we have the uh, guitar line and then the guitar mic. So this is the DI signal. This is the actual recorded signal for the guitar. Um, and then I've also kind of panned them. So yeah, just I'm just gonna keep those there. But in terms of processing, uh, this is what they were given to me with. These are just the raw tracks. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. So you could hear there that uh, the the vocal especially was quite dry um, and quite intimate up in your face. So that tells me right away that uh, the vocal was recorded in more of a dry setting. So in order to give it that more larger than life sound or a more uh, maybe cinematic application, um, I'd have to give it that extra reverb on the top. So. Um, that just gives it a little bit of polish, and I know that I'm going to have to treat his vocals anyway to give it that shine. Um, so uh, basically, the first step before doing any of that is to actually do the arrangement. So in addition to his two guitar tracks, which we have the DI signal and the, the recorded mic signal, um, th th that was kind of an easy, easy decision to kind of just pan left and right to give it some width. If I only had one guitar signal, I would likely just duplicate the track and then pan both left and right. But in this case, I, I liked that, you know, we actually have both here. Um, but in any case, you know, given just the vocal and the guitar, the next uh, logical application would be the piano. So I played in p uh, the MIDI piano using Cine Piano. I'll pull up the contact instance here as well. Um, and if you, if you for for those of you who know my videos, I really love using Cine Piano. I, I probably turn to it about ninety eight percent of the time, to be honest. Uh, whether it be for sketching purposes or just regular final application, I use Cine Piano all the time. Just a beautiful sound recorded at the MGM scoring stage. So anyway, here is what it sounds like with a bit of piano. Let's actually go, uh, I'll, I'll go here first so you can hear the piano come in. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Right, so the piano starts to add like a tinkling effect to everything. It starts to fill in the harmonic foundation a little bit more. Uh, then the next thing I did was add in the violins, or sorry, just, just, just the strings in general. So here I pulled up the Cinematic Studio Strings Ensemble Patch. So if we go to that library, um, it's beautiful because you can literally just pull in the Ensemble Patch and it has all the strings contained. And in terms of articulations, it's very, very simple. You literally only have three options. Um, and in the case of this song, because it's more laid back and it's more of a um, more of a ballad type of song, I just went with the traditional sustains. So this is not legato, but it's basically just sustain notes that you can hold, right? And, and then it just continues on indefinitely. So then I layered this in underneath, and I think I started this... Holy there yeah, is... So this is like the second chorus, if you will. So the strings start coming in to fill in the rest of the frequency spectrum, more of the highs, and then I introduce the lows a little bit later. Holy, there is no one like you. There is 
there's none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and in general you can see here that in terms of voice leading, I'm trying to keep it very, very smooth. At most, I'm kind of going up a step, occasionally going down a skip if I need to, but going up by half steps or down by half steps or you know whole steps is usually the best way to go if you can stay diatonic in the key. Um, then for some counter melody, for some horn, uh, sorry, for some counter melody, I threw in the horn. Here it says violas, I just didn't rename it. <laughs> uh, shame on me. But I threw in the French horn from Cinebrass. There we go. Uh, so it kind of sounds like this. So at first I used it to kind of layer in some extra uh, color, but then in terms of counter melody, you can see here it's like stepping and, and all that good stuff. Shaken, I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in so it's kind of filling up the middle and I will not be shaken. and you can also hear the flute on top I wanted to throw in the flute uh, to give it an airy texture near the beginning of course naturally I have the drums um, in a kind of a song like this just a typical um, pop beat you know and I used uh, the um, drum, drum kit from Cineperk Pro for this also a bass uh, from Swing, and that just outlines the the foundation, the harmony, um, and just gives it a little more fullness in the bottom end. So usually I, I like to have the frequency spectrum very evenly distributed. So in this case, with the strings are filling up the whole spectrum, but we also have the top covered by the strings. We have the bass covering the bottom end. We also have the flute covering the top. So it, it's very even. And then of course you have the guitar and the piano filling out the mids. Um, you could use like a frequency analyzer, like a visual thing to guide your decisions. In general, I, I prefer to mix with my ears and make arrangement decisions based on what I feel is lacking in certain frequency ranges. So that's kind of a, a, an overall a concept I can share is that it's it's always better to fill in the frequency spectrum evenly when, when possible. And that's what results in like a balanced and pleasant listening experience for the listener. And then finally, just for some extra um, uh, gloss, I threw in the choir here from uh, Time, yeah, Time uh, Macro, I believe. So it's just the O sustain. Sounds like this. Right? There is none beside you. Oh. So yeah, there we go. Cool. Let's uh, let's jump into the mix now. So, uh. Just as a general rule, the less you, the less plugins you have to use, the better. Um, so what I mean by this is, usually when you're mixing, the better the quality of your recorded tracks, the the less you have to do in the mix. Because mixing is all about balance. It's all about making sure you hear the instruments properly and they all are playing an important role in your piece. Um, so if you can balance them you know, using your faders and get a good sounding static mix without using any plugins, then that is the best starting point that you can go from. Uh, setting up a really good foundation is is crucial here. So as I've talked about in my mixing videos, and if you, if you haven't checked them out yet, just check out my mixing series that I have been putting out for the past month. But uh, one of the first steps I do is to bring all the faders down to zero and then bring each fader, volume fader up one at a time based on importance of the instrument and try to achieve um, a balance that, you know, where I can hear all the individual tracks um, in the song. Uh, so that's what I did here. And uh, you can see I've lowered the guitars a little bit because they were recorded a little bit louder. So I brought them down to about halfway. The vocal, of course, I wanted to retain the presence. So I brought that up. And then these other instruments were, were recorded a little bit quieter. Um, I made sure to turn them down in the contact instance so they didn't clip. So as you know, after I got my basic volume balance, then I turned my attention to the master fader. And I only have two plugins on here. I brought in the mix centric from Waves. 
uh, brought it to about you know 10 o'clock there, and immediately it gave me that sparkle I was looking for. So if I just uh, turn, let's for now let's turn off this uh, limiter. No, let's keep it on actually because um, before you were hearing it at a certain level, so let's maintain the level. But let's let's turn off the mixentric first. Shaken, I will build my life and now on. upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And so hopefully you can hear the difference that makes right away. Uh, it basically cleans everything up. It, it handles the mid-range beautifully, makes everything a little more clear and, and crisp. Um, so you really have to use your ear to determine the amount that you want to add in to really give it that sparkle. Um, and then after that, I followed it up with Ozone 8 Elements, which is basically a an all-in-one mastering plugin. Um, applied a little bit of EQ to the higher ends just to bring out those frequencies. Uh, didn't really touch the imager, and then for the maximizer, just uh, brought it up a few decibels to get it to commercial volume. And then I went to the vocals next because I knew it needed uh, the most work. And this is my typical vocal chain. I start with a de um, then I threw in Pro-Q2, uh, taking out a lot of the low end. Uh, let's just hear the vocal really quickly by itself. Only one who could ever say. So I'm making sure to take out this like sub 50 range. We don't really need this stuff, you know? Um, Live for you. There, that, there's a little bit of, you know, that muffled sound I don't really like. So I took that out. And then oh. this kind of boxy nasal sound as well. You can hear that. So took that out. There is none. And then I wanted to bring out a bit of the air in his voice. My so eyes without. in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your okay good um so once i got that clarity then i wanted to apply a little bit of compression because naturally if you look at the waveform of a vocal and by the way all these things i'm talking about these are all fundamental things uh uh the recording revolution graham cochran he he does a very wonderful job explaining the basics of mixing um eq compression delay reverb all that good stuff but anyway you can see how the there's such a big dynamic range between the vocal, right? And in the vocal performance. So applying a bit of compression basically lowers the loudest parts of the vocal. So they're closer to the softest parts. And then because the overall volume of the vocal has now been brought down, we can apply some makeup gain to bring the overall level of the vocal back up to make it more consistent with everything else. So here is uh, without compression, and then I'm going to turn on our Vox from Waves, and you'll, you'll hear how it's applied. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. And okay, let's hear that with the plugin on. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me. So this this bit of this red here that's poking down, that's showing the amount of gain that's being reduced. So you can see it's very light. I'm actually not doing too much compression here. Um, at the same time, I pulled down the gain a little bit because it was a little bit uh, too loud. Who you are so, and feel see, the more you pull it down, this is, this is like, because they, they basically apply makeup gain for you. So you pull it down to the amount where you feel like the, the vocal is back at the right level. So look here to apply your gain reduction. If it's a lot, maybe you want to ease up on it. You don't want to compress the vocal too much right away um, and then apply the corresponding makeup gain your heart and lead me 
So then after that, I went with Greg Wells Voice Centric. And this plugin is amazing. I turned it to about one o'clock position, um, but just let's have a listen to this. So it's going to apply a bit of compression in EQ, but as well as some reverb, doubler, and delay. And this is the amount of each I've dialed in. So doubler is kind of the least. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Oh. So hearing it in solo, I mean, the delay sounds excessive. It sounds like a lot, but in the mix, you don't really hear it. Uh, let's, and then I brought in another compressor and see how much this is doing. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are. So you can see the needle was kind of hitting around two decibels, three decibels of gain reduction. So as a result, I brought up the makeup gain about that same amount to make sure whatever is reduced is um, brought back up that same amount for the overall track to make it even more consistent in terms of volume. And then finally, I wanted a touch more reverb to put it in that space. So I brought in Valhalla Room, put it at about 8%, and I left it as is. So here's what it sounds like with everything on. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside. And now that I have the vocal in its space, I also wanted to apply the guitars to the same space. I do. You hear that beautiful reverb there. So I applied about 15% to each one, each of those guitar signals. So there we go. I didn't really have to apply any reverb to the other instruments with the exception of the flute, the drums, and the bass. I felt like those, uh, especially the drums and the bass are such fundamental instruments in like a pop or rock arrangement. So I wanted those two, the drums, bass, guitar, and the vocal to be the foundation of the song. So I put them as in as similar of a space as possible. So again, you can see the 15.7% reverb that I applied to those. And just for fun, I put a bit on the flute too because I felt it was a little bit dry. So the flute is from Berlin Woodwinds. Um, and that's basically it. So everything together, I'll just play a little bit of a passage. Me who you Actually, let's go somewhere near the end. Around me, I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust Let the strings lift off with the, with the guitar at the same time and done. So that's it. That's the arrangement and the mix of uh, Build My Life. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something about the mix as well. Um, again, simplicity is key. Whenever I mix my own music, I try to keep things as simple as possible. And the way you can do that is by getting a good balance of your tracks. That really is the foundation of mixing. Um, most engineers will preach this because this is what the mixing engineers did back in the day when they were like when their sole job was to really balance the tracks evenly across the band. If they were playing live, for example, um, their job is to kind of move the faders until they achieve a good balance that lets the song really speak. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which is super exciting because I have a, uh... anyway, I, you know what? I just, I won't say anything. I won't spoil it. I'll, I'll let you see it when it comes out. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.